Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening world, and welcome to Sioria News Channel. I am Vinny Bertoledo, together with my co-anchors Agnes Tusono, Rona Bolima, and Anami Gapus. Our news for today is about the Philippine nursing theorist, Sister Letty G. Kuan. And we begin with Agnes Tusono. Agnes? Vinny Bert, good morning to you. So I now start with Sister Letty G. Kuan's biography. She was born in November 19, 1939 in Katipunan de Polog, Sambuanga del Norte. She is a nurse with two master's degree, MA in nursing and MS in education major in guidance counseling. She holds a doctoral degree in education major in guidance counseling. And all these postgraduate studies were obtained in University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. Now let's take a look first in contribution in UP. For her vast contributions to University of the Philippines, College of Nursing, Faculty, and Academic Achievements, she was awarded the distinctive post of Professor Emeritus, a title awarded only to a few who met the strict criteria set by the University of the Philippines in September 2004. As a Professor Emeritus, aside from University of the Philippines, Manila, she is affiliated in several schools, namely, Siliman University in Dimaguete, Cebu Normal University, Father Rorius University in Butuan, St. Joseph College in Quezon City, San Pedro College in Dabao. She has clinical, fellowship, and specialization in neuropsychology, obtained from University of Paris, France in Salpetriere Hospital, Neurogerontology in Watertown, New York, Good Samaritan Hospital, and Saracus University, New York. She further added this field of specialization in Geneva in the Centre de Sons in saint fi or Les Trocime Age Group. She is a recipient of Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Teachers Award in 1995, the first faculty to win such an award representing the UP Manila, and an award for continuing integrity and excellence in service in 2004. Uh, Agnes, can you tell something about the books that was authored by Sister Kwan? Ah, yes, Genevieve. Sister Kwan authored several books giving her insights in areas of gerontology, care of older persons and bioethics and essence of caring, concept of illness and healthcare interventions in an urban community in 1975, understanding the Filipino elderly a textbook for nurses and related health professionals in 1993, Essence of Caring in 1993, Pag-aaruga sa mga taong may edad na in 1998, and Bioethic in Nursing in 2006. Penny Agnes, thank you very much for that very detailed biography of Sister Kuan. Thank you. In the middle of this report, basic assumptions and concepts of Sister Kuan will be mentioned. Rona Bolima for the first information to be given. Okay, thank you, Miss Guinevere. We have six basic assumptions and concepts of Sister Letty Kuan, starting with physiological age. This is the endurance of cells and tissues to withstand the wear and tear phenomenon of the human body. Some individuals are gifted with strong genetic affinity to stay young for a long time. The second one is the role. It refers to the set of shared expectations focused upon a particular position. They may include beliefs about what goals or values the position incumbent to pursue and norms that will govern his behavior. It is also the set of shared expectations from the rhetoric socialization experiences and the values internalized while preparing for the position as well as the adaptations to expectations socially defined for the position itself. Next, we have the change of life. It is the period between near retirement and post-retirement years. In medical physiologic terms, this equates with the climatic period of adjustment and readjustment to another tempo of life. 
Next, we have the Rectory. is an individual who has left the position occupied for the past years of productive life because he or she reached the prescribed retirement age or has completed the required years of its service. For the last two basic assumptions and concepts of Sister Latic One, please continue, Guinevere. Okay, Rona, the fifth is role discontinuity, wherein the interruption in the line of status enjoyed or performed. This may be brought about by an accident, emergency, and change of position or retirement. The sixth, which is the last, is coping approaches that refer to the interventions or measures applied to solve a problematic situation or state in order to restore or maintain equilibrium and normal functioning. Now people, here are the nursing metaparadigm concepts of Sister Kuwan, as you can glance on the screen. Number one, person. It is classified into two. The first one is elderly. It is a classification of age group to any person reaching the mid-70s up to the 80s. And the second, Jerome, which is given to people who are old but gracefully able to function as useful citizens at home and in the community, and an exemplar in fidelity to clear life. Number two, nursing. This is preparing the person to have fulfillment in their retirement years and assisting them in their elderly years in leaving a legacy. Number three, health. It is defined as aging. It is a slow process of growth towards maturity of mind, body, and spirit. Now for our next news, Anami Campos will join us. Anami, could you give us some information about the retirement and role discontinuities conceptual model of Sister Kuan? Sure, Guinevere. So let's now move on to the retirement and role discontinuity conceptual model. So during retirement, there is a role discontinuity. This is called aging process. There is a sudden interruption of the usual role that a person performed. So for example, this person was working like, like a, a school teacher and then she retired because of age. So there's a change of life and these changes can lead to outcome. So the outcome of a graceful aging depends on these determinants that I'm going to mention today. First one is the health status. Health status is a physiological and mental state of the respondents classified as sickly or healthy. Examples are functional health, disability days, activity limitation, health expectancy, disability free life expectancy. So how healthy a person is determines how happy he or she, he, she is in, during her uh, retirement days. Next is income. It refers to the financial affluence of the respondents, which can be classified as poor, moderate, or rich. So how wealthy a person is can also affect how happy he or she is during her retirement days. But I've known a lot of people who are not so wealthy but happy with their life. Maybe because it depends on the perspective of that person. So a person can be poor but happy, and a person can be wealthy but sad. So I'm going to talk about an acquisition later on after this determinants. Next is work status. Work status. This refers to the status of an individual according to job source of income. Next one is family constellation. According to Latic One, there are three types of family composition. First one is close-knit or extended family where three or more family generations living in one group. Another one is distance family, whose members live in separate dwelling units. So the last one is the nuclear type of family, that where the, there only one husband, wife, and children live together. So an elderly is happier when she or he belongs to a big family, because who doesn't, right? Next one is self-preparation. So among all the determinants that I've already mentioned, this is absolutely one of the most important determinants, self-preparation. It refers to the preparation of self of the possible outcomes in life. Uh, Let me one said that you have to prepare not only in your uh, financial status but also in your mental, emotional, and physical status. 
So before I end this part, I will just share to you what some take away from Leti Kuma. She said that if you have a very happy and nice childhood, you will have a very fruitful aging, happy retirement, and ultimately, legacy. So, if Leti Kuma was referring to what you can give to other people, that defines legacy. Is it love? Is it hatred? So it depends on what you have acquired during your childhood. So it is very important to have a very happy and fruitful childhood for you to have a graceful aging as well. So once again, graceful aging jewelry depend, depends on the happy acquisition a person had during his or her childhood. So um, one of the interview of Leti Kuman, somebody asked her, what if there is a deficiency? of this determinants or what if this person didn't acquire good things during childhood what do we do then that's where the role of nurse come into play we have to fill the gap we have to um, have a big heart big ears and small mouth we have to always ready to listen and be there for our patients especially for those who are elderly when you hear Thank you so much, Anami, for that informative news and for inserting the key message of Sister Kuai. And that's all for today's report. I am Vinny Bertolengo. I am Agnes Dusono. I am Rona Bulima. And I am Anami Gabus. This is Fiora News Channel. At, At your, your service. service.